I hope I do not um, offend my fellow Americans. I've never told this story before, but you are looking at someone. One of the main reasons I left the United States, I was coming home to Boston um, from the Middle East where I had taught in Saudi Arabia. And I, I landed Logan Airport in Boston. They take a look at my, they scan my passport. And I go to pick up my luggage. And two state policemen stop me. They put handcuffs on me. I'm asking them what's going on. Uh, you'll find out was the answer. I was, this was uh, during the summer, just be, this was on a Friday afternoon at three o'clock before a long uh, July 4th weekend. Finally, Tuesday morning, they, they, they allowed me to put my regular clothes on again. They throw me in the back of a police uh, wagon, bring me to court, and um, that I finally find out that, oh, you owe us $50 for going through a traffic light. Yeah, yeah, that, that's the reaction most Americans uh, have when I tell them this story, the exact expression on your face, uh, Dan. Well, I, I tell them, well, when did this happen? They told me the date, and I told them that couldn't be. I was in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, when that happened, was supposedly, that must have been someone else's license plate or because I had given up my license plate before I had gone overseas. The judge said, I don't want to hear it. You owe the, the state $50, or do you want to go back to the county house of correction? I took out the money. I paid it to the court, and they finally let me go. That is why I say in America, the so-called freedom is a fantasy. Uh, about two days later, I was on the airplane flying south to Mexico. So this is Dan of Vagabond Awake, and we're lucky enough to have Aaron back uh, to visit us again. It's been a couple of years since he was here. He's back to update us on what his living costs is in. Aaron, tell us where you are. I am in Querétaro, Mexico. One of my favorite the cities in Mexico. city in the world. <laughs> well, good, good. You're in good shape then. So um, and one of the things, I, I received your email. You wanted to update us on your cost of living. Um, how, so we have an idea of how inflation is going there in that part of Mexico or that part of the world. Um, how have things changed in terms of your cost of living, Aaron? As everywhere else we've been hit by the inflation not as bad as i hear back in the united states but let me um go over a few overall my expenses i hate to say have almost doubled but along with that I've added 1200 to my income at the same time. So sort of balanced off. My rent the last time we spoke was $230 a month. My rent now is $270 a month. So it's okay. gone up about $40. I'm still in the same apartment that I was the last time we spoke. So we're... Transportation was around $40 the last time we talked. Transportation is now around $50. So it's gone up a little. Food, I'm eating more at home than I did before because, 
you know, costs have gone up. But my uh, food for a month is $250. That's, that includes alcohol as, as well. Restaurants, I'm spending about $200. I was spending about $100 more before, but I've slowed down my, um, my going out. I am having, um, I still belong to the National uh, Insurance uh, Scheme here in Mexico. That is now uh, 80. I broke it down over a year all uh, uh, per month, but they take it out once a year. That's $80. And that's month. Health, health insurance, that right? In, yeah, but that includes everything from soup to nuts. That's great. Um, that's great. So um, <clears throat> I don't remember the exact amount. I think you were in the high 800s last time, Chad. So it, like you said, it went up uh, about 50% or so. Your cost yes. of living. Yes. Um, now, have you had have, have you had any experience with the health care? You mentioned the the cost is about eighty dollars a month. Have you had a chance to uh, need any services there? And, and if so, what kind of experience was that, good or bad? Uh, it, in the last uh, year and a half, I I started having problems walking with one of my legs. I woke up one morning. And I could barely drag my leg getting out of bed. And um, I quickly, I called up and made an appointment, a very quick appointment with EAMS, which is the national health care system here in Mexico. And I was able to get in to EAMS within three hours of my call to them. Now I had to wait about a, an hour once I got there, but uh, between four different times that I went to see the doctor from beginning to end over about a month's period, six different pills I had to take, plus some blood work, it was fantastic. As you know, in the States, when you go to see a doctor, if you are lucky to get 10 minutes <laughs> with the doctor in the office, they usually send in the nurse and all the things that you and I would have had when we were growing up, the doctor, would have come in and, you know, checked our blood pressure and done all the preliminary things. Now the nurses do that. They write them down and then the doctor comes in, talks to you for 10 minutes, if you're lucky. <laughs> then they're on to the next patient. Here I had the doctor, believe it or not, 20 minutes to a half an hour each time I went in. So over a month's period. If you like my free ebook about how I fired my boss and traveled the world for 17 years and how I pay for things, come to Vagabond Buddha and grab the free ebook. I had about two hours worth of a doctor's time. Blood work was done professionally no problems whatsoever. And paying the $80 a month for my health to the government for my health care, I, I did not pay not one centavo, not one dime did I pay for my medicines. Now I had to stand in line for about 15 minutes to get to the to the farm the pharmacy for them to pass to give me my medicines but that was it that 
was my full exposure to the uh, healthcare system here. Wow, that's spectacular. 80 bucks a month, that's a dream. But I don't think even a teenager could get health care for that in the States and there would still be a big <laughs> deductible. So tell us a little bit about, um, and you were happy overall with the health care. The, the, uh, it, it turned out uh, well oh, for you. Ab abso ab absolutely. Absolutely. They, um, at Eames, you, mm, they actually have interpreters mm. so that if you don't speak Spanish, and my Spanish is still a work in progress, mm. um, they have two to three available interpreters that can come in to the um, office and help you with your uh, speaking to the doctor at the doc. Now, some doctors do speak English. Some it's, you know, it's touch and go. You know, at least they have people there to help you. The judge said, I don't want to hear it. You owe the, the state $50, or do you want to go back to the county house of correction? I took out the money, I paid it to the court, and they finally let me go. That is why I say in America, the so-called freedom is a fantasy. On the other hand, Dan, I have been here in Mexico now 12 years and nine months. I have never been stopped not one by a policeman or any official within the Mexican establishment here. And I and when I've stopped the Mexican policeman and asked for help, they've always been polite, they've always been nice. I have never once been mistreated by the government of Mexico. I'm sorry to have to tell the American people that story. It seems like a big waste of taxpayer money to uh, arrest you with two police officers, drive you to jail, keep you there for three days, um, for and not even tell you you owe 50 bucks, um, which you probably could have opted to pay it then. The whole thing seems ridiculous. Um, and then the judge, he probably could have looked at your passport, seen your exit and your entry permit, and your uh, uh, and yeah. and your your entry and That's exit what I told from, him. and 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 he, judge. he would it's 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 ironclad it's a U.S. Uh, immigration saying when you came and went and so the whole thing sounds like a terrible it, mistake it, it, on it, their part. The thing is, they don't want to hear it. That it, it, if you if you talk to more and more people, the the government doesn't want to to hear it from from people they just want you this is what we're telling you you need to do do it that is um i could i could tell you other stories that other people have told me other americans uh, about 2 days later i was on the airplane flying south to Mexico. Well, thanks for telling that story, uh, Aaron. So you you asked me to ask you a couple other things on this update uh, of your experience in Mexico. One of them you wanted to talk about friendliness, how, how the locals treat you there uh, in Mexico. We Americans could learn a, a bit about not being suspicious or not being so standoffish just the other day, I was um, in one of the local stores and I was having a communication problem with a person at checkout. Two people behind me, can I help you? Do you need, the person's English was perfect, came up just, just out of the goodness of their heart 
in two or three minutes, everything was solved. And the, uh, the person even said, hey, what, uh, do you have a, a little bit of time? Uh, I'd like to uh, um, I'd like to offer you. I'll pay for a cup of coffee if you'll sit down and talk with me, so I can practice my English a little bit. Yeah, that happens to me all over the world. That's great. Um, people, they're always solving problems around me. Uh, when I run into someone who doesn't speak whatever language I'm speaking. Um, because I, you know, I travel a lot. I don't speak all the languages. I'm mainly just an English speaker, and so that's great. That's a great example of of, of friendliness. And uh, so, thanks for sharing that. Um, so, you also mentioned that uh, things have changed a little bit with the peso versus the dollar. Um, what do you What are your thoughts about that? Uh, if you remember the last time we spoke, um, at that time. The peso gone from like 22, 23 to the dollar down. I think at the time it was around 17 to the dollar. Yeah, 17. It eventually got to 15.7. .7. Well, over the last four months, it has gone in the opposite. It's now 19.7 to 20.2 to the dollar. There has been some changes in um, immigration law yeah. here in, in Mexico. Yeah, what's that? Before, uh, there is a new program called the RNE program. Now, what it used to be was that you you could come and you could um, get 180 days or six months. Then you would have to leave the country, and then you know uh, you, you know the Mexico is very easy. You you leave for a day, you come back, and they'll give you another 180 <laughs> days. But if you wanted to stay legally um, for more than 180 days, if you wanted to be here legally, you would have to leave and you would have to go through um, the Mexican consulate in another country. Well, the way the RNE program works, if within the last three, within three, the last three years, you had come to Mexico, and you had come in as a tourist, you now, as long as you can show them that in your passport, you can now ask for temporary residency without having to go to uh, to the Mexican consulate in your own country. Oh, that's nice. And then um, after you get the temporary residency, you can just have it renewed by staying in Mexico. You, you cannot come in for only two weeks. You have to have been in Mexico for at least two months under that program so that you are a, a more long-term resident in Mexico, just renewed the RNE program for next year. They just did that last month. And after four years as a temporary resident, 
you are automatically eligible to become a permanent resident. So one of the things people always hear about and they're always talking about if they haven't themselves spent a lot of time in Mexico, what, what's your experience been about safety in Mexico? I am, this is another problem. Americans um, are told that Mexico is a dangerous place to be. And it it isn't, at, at least me and my, all the expats, expatriates that I know, um, I can go out at midnight and walk through my neighborhood here in in Queretaro, and I have no fear of being um, molested or being bothered uh, by anyone. I've never felt in danger, no matter where I have lived here in Mexico, whether I lived in Mexico City, when I lived in um, the state of Oaxaca, when I was teaching at the university there. Um, it, it is now, if you get involved drug cartels yeah you probably are going to have a problem but if you mind your own business and you go about living your life normally like i said i've never had any problem with anyone here in mexico well, Aaron, thanks so much for the update. Um, are you? Do you have room for more students? Can you tell us what you teach and 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 how they would contact you if you do? Okay, uh, I I teach all levels of English from beginner to uh, just if people are fluent in English, if they just want to practice conversation or anything in between, they can contact me at umut, U-M-U-T, 9272, at gmail.com. Well, Aaron, thanks so much for coming on the channel and, and telling people what's going on over the last few years with inflation and updating them on these things. I really appreciate when you come on the channel. and. You're welcome. Could you please help me with something? You've probably watched our guest star interviews on our guest star playlist. I interview people that have retired overseas. They share valuable information such as cost of living, safety concerns, finding love overseas, healthcare experiences, and money problems. If you'd like to share something that you have learned living overseas, please come to vagabondbuddha.com, click the more tab, Click the Contact Me tab and tell me about what you would like to share with my channel.